Alright guys, so welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to go over some of the things I wish I knew when I got started when I first started my career in tech as a network engineer. And let's get started into this. So um, as you guys know, I've been a network engineer for almost three years now. And during this time, I learned a ton of information, right? I came from, you know, university and once as soon as I jumped into becoming a network engineer, everything was completely new to me, right? Um, as you guys know, I know some of you guys are in university in that learning phase in school, but I want you guys to know that all the stuff that you're learning in school, maybe even 80, 90% of that stuff, you're not going to do on the day-to-day -day basis in your current job. And that may sound crazy because, you know, you're spending so much time in university doing all these projects, all these capstones, all these homework assignments and exams and quizzes. And you're going to feeling like yeah, I'm learning so much and this is all so going to be, this is going to be incredibly useful. But as you guys know, this is not the medical field. This is tech. This is tech. This is not medical. So things are always changing. And the universities, they're always a step behind the, the curve in terms of innovation. And the problem with that is as soon as you get started working in this industry, you're going to realize that you don't really know much. And you have to accept that. That's the first thing I wish I knew is that you have to accept that you really don't know much and you always have to be learning. You always have to be learning. And this is um, a thing that you have to accept because as you know, this tech industry is always changing. You always have to be learning new skills. Um, as you guys know, you know, when it comes to network engineering, traditionally, you didn't really have to know how to code. Coding wasn't really as important as it was, as it is now. Um, having the ability to not only program and write automations is gonna be incredibly valuable to a company. And having that skill set is incredibly important, right? And obviously that's just, you know, so, a small thing. But let's just assume like maybe you became a network engineer 10 years ago and you didn't know how to code at that time. And obviously now the company is requiring you to know how to code. So you're going to have to spend time outside of work or even in work, depending on how the work is structured, to actually spend that time and learn how to do that skill set, right? And that may take time, right? And that's just something that you have to accept is that it's going to take time and you also have to spend time outside of work to learn new stuff. So if you guys don't have a desire or a willingness to learn after, you know, you get a degree or you get that certification, then this industry might not be the best for you. And that's just something you guys have to accept is that, you know, you have to keep learning. You have to accept that this is what technology is all about. It's all about innovating. It's all about making things more efficient, making it better. And if you can't, Go with that skill gap. If your skills like if there's a gap between you and the innovation, you're always going to be behind and you are just going to be falling behind. So that's number one is that you keep have you keep have to learn. Like now for number two, you guys have to focus on communication, right? Um, especially when you guys are working for in a company in a business setting. Um, communication is key and you have to communicate relatively fast. As you guys know, when it comes to school, maybe you can hit people up three hours, two hours, but when it comes to like working in technology or even operations, um, you know, you have to reply quite quickly, you know, within a five, 10 minute span uh, to messages, to emails, because, you know, things are moving swiftly and, you know, you're working as a team and you're working in the private sector. You're working in a company that is based off their revenue, based off how they're doing in their profit margins and stuff like that. So if they're, if, you get, if the company's not moving efficiently, if things are not getting done quickly, that's not good at all, right? So communication is by far the most important thing when it comes to working in a field like this because, you know, sometimes you're working in a team. You guys have to effectively communicate. Sometimes one person is working from home, another person is in the office, and you guys have to work within a team, um, in a team setting, and, you know, having that ability to not only communicate but communicate in a relatively mm -hmm. fast way is going to benefit your career because people love fast communication because I'd rather get a response who, who, like, let's say you have a question. Let's say there's there's something in the business that's going wrong and you need to get this solved, right? Let's say you're troubleshooting an, an issue, right? And if you're not communicating that f quick enough, then, you know, people are going to be like, why is this person coming taking so long? What, what's going on? So that's just something you guys have to understand is that, you know, communicate, but also communicate quite quickly. And, and really that's going to show a good light on sort of like your personality not really personality but more is going to show like okay this person is very reliable he's always on time always like responding to messages quite quickly that's the most important thing people even if you don't have the answers to the question as long as you give them a response that is extremely important so number three is going to be that 
the imposter syndrome, right? And I brought, I've made a video about this uh, before, but really imposter syndrome is that feeling of you don't really think you know enough or you feel like you're like you're in this position and you don't really deserve the position that you're in because you don't really know enough. And in reality, everyone's sort of in this position in tech, right? Everyone, it's very rare you meet someone who knows everything and everything. And those people are extremely valuable to the company. But the majority of people, there's going to be certain things that you have no idea about. No idea that's completely new. You've never seen before. And you have to take the time to actually learn that on the job. And this is going to be very intimidating for a lot of fellow new engineers because they're going to see something that they've never seen before. You know, maybe they did a bunch of certifications. They got the training. They've had even prior experience and they still struggle to understand like certain concepts. And when they're doing the job, they're like, how do I get this? I don't know what's going on. I feel like I don't deserve this position. Like, I can't believe like, you know, I feel like everyone thinks I'm dumb. Um, this like, You're afraid to even ask questions because you're afraid of asking a dumb question. So it just like, it gets worse and worse and worse because then you don't really effectively communicate your issues and things just end up piling on and piling on. And then you start feeling like this black cloud in front of you and you feel like, oh my God, I don't know anything. What's going on? What's going on? And that's a big issue that a lot of people struggle with is this imposter syndrome. But you have to remember that everyone deals with it. Uh, people deal with it to a certain extent, right? It really just depends on if it's your first time, you're going to deal with it like at level 100, right? It's going to be extremely difficult. But if you guys are, you know, are seasoned veterans, you've been in the industry for a while, you understand the process, right? And you've seen it and done it before and you have that confidence in yourself, right? It really imposter syndrome come, really comes from the lack of confidence, right? And confidence come from, comes from competence. I'm going to say that again. Confidence comes from competence, right? You could only be confident in something that you've done many times before. I mean, you could fake confidence, but in reality, the confidence comes from your ability that your previous history that, yes, I've done this before. I've seen this. I've done this many times. For example, like you driving a car, you're going to be, you're very confident that you were able to drive a car and go to the supermarket, right? Maybe the first time you did it, you weren't as confident. Why? Because you haven't done it before. But once you've done it routinely many times over and over and over and over, it's going to be extremely easy. So that's just something that people have to understand is that that imposter syndrome really comes from the lack of confidence because you have no competence that you've built up over time. So like I said, it, it's a thing that you have to accept. And really, you have to use the strategies before, which is always keep learning and always effectively communicate. So that's number three. All right, guys. So now for number four is to build connections. And what I mean by that is whenever you're in a company, now you have the opportunity to not only learn from other individuals, maybe seasoned veterans, people who's been in the industry for a while, people that you wouldn't see on a day-to-day -day basis, but now that you're in this company, you're able to network with these individuals. And these individuals not only are going to give you insights and intel, they'll give you advice, they'll give you so much information. So the best thing you guys can possibly do is to befriend one of these individuals, talk to them, ask for advice, go to lunch with them, and really take that time to build a connection with these individuals. Because maybe later on, you know, as you guys know, the more connections you have, the more people you talk to, uh, the more they'll be on top of your mind. And whenever you have any issue or anything in the future that you need, those individuals will be there for you, right? So you always want to build out a connection, right? Even let's say hypothetically you leave the company in two years. At least now you have a connection of, you know, let's say 20, 30 people that you know that work there. And maybe, maybe in ten, two, three years, you can reach that contact. They'll remember you. They'll give you information about what they're doing. Maybe they'll give you, they'll tell you about other opportunities that they have. And really, that's the best thing about working at a company is that not only are you learning the skill set, not only are you getting a salary, of course, um, but you're also being able to network with these individuals, right? And for example, I always tell you know people that are in university, like, take that time to actually network with people. Because whenever you have the opportunity where you're in an area where it's in a group of people that are, are all have a, so, sort of a similar goal, it's going to be easier because you guys are, you know, doing similar things, right? And, you know, those are the type of people that you want to have connections with because they're going to give you the intel. And like I said, there's things that, that are called the out, uh, not really outliers, but like things that are, that are the unknown unknowns, right? So they'll tell you things that you didn't even know at all, but you wouldn't even think to know about it. You get what I'm saying? Like they'll tell you things that um, that you had just completely no clue about, you know what I'm saying? Like that kind of stuff. And that sort of intel that they give you is going to be mission critical to your success in your career because are you gonna, you're going to get those insights from those individuals and those individuals will later on, 
you know, give you information and you'll learn more. And guess what? They'll give you more ideas for later on in your career. So uh, those are the four big things that I wish I knew when I got started. Um, as you guys know, if you guys are new to the industry, start these things now. Don't take it for granted. You have a great opportunity and keep pushing. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you guys like this video, give it a like. Um, if you guys want to see more videos like this and you guys like the channel, go ahead and subscribe. And uh, if you guys, you know, feel, have a comment or any questions, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Uh, I'll respond to every single comment. And uh, with that being said, everyone, I want to say thank you guys so much for tuning in. And I hope you guys have a good day. Peace.